welcome to The Perspective. Before we jump into today's program, which is amazing, I want to give you a promise for today, a promise from God's Word. It's found in John chapter 14 and verse 27, where Jesus says to his disciples, who are fraught with worry, peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. That's God's word for you today to hold on to, to cherish. Let's watch together the program. Welcome to The Perspective, everybody. My name is Mitch Hunter. I'm co-hosting today, and the show is The Perspective with Mike Sherboneau. I can't find him around here anywhere. I got a stormtrooper or something beside me, so I don't know what happened to Mike. Uh, I might just have to go for it by myself and hope for the best. Uh, oh, I tell you, Mitch, man, I don't know how they did it in the movie. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and he appears. <laughs> yeah, so welcome to all our <laughs> viewers. Uh, what is it? May the 4th be with you. We're just going to have a lot of fun today. Mitch, tell us who are our special guests. Well, we're going to have Roger Christian and Linda Blazy, and I think we're going to have a good conversation. Before we even get into that, Mike, we've got some more Star Wars stuff here. If we could just show it off. Wow. I think if me and you disagree at any point during the perspective, yeah, we so can just... look at this. Look at... Wow. Like, how come they didn't have these toys when I was a kid? We can handle disagreements the old-fashioned way this. Yeah, the old-fashioned. <laughs> I don't know if I can turn it off, but anyways. Yeah. Okay. That's fun. So we got some amazing people here right now. And I want to welcome uh, Roger Christian and Linda Blazy. Linda is uh, with PureFlix, and Roger is uh, doing all sorts of tricks and creating amazing things. Welcome both of you today to The Perspective. Thank you. Thank you. And Linda, how are you? I'm great, thank you. And it is such an honor to be able to talk about this and fun and to have met Roger. Uh, I feel like I've met a kindred spirit and uh, as we talk about storytelling and themes. Right on. Well, hey, you know what? I'd love to just jump into a question because, you know, we look at all this paraphernalia and it shaped uh, so many lives. Uh, so many people have been, uh, in, you know, enthralled with the movie series and, and Linda, you are running Pure Flix. Just take a minute and explain what Pure Flix is, though. We want to understand that. Thank you. We are a streaming service. We're in the U.S. and Canada, and we are faith and family service. And we are a place where you are going to discover new content that you've never seen, exclusives. You're going to find some of the stuff out there that you hadn't had a chance that we license. And we're producing original content that are really based on some of these great biblical themes that you see in storytelling. We're a storyteller and we're a streaming service. Well, Linda, it's nice getting to know a bit about you and Roger Christian. I know that we have spoken before, but uh, for folks who don't know you, uh, just tell us a bit about yourself and some of the projects that you've been involved with. Yeah, you got to brag a little bit, Roger, okay? <laughs> well, basically, from set decorating the first Star Wars and creating most of the sets and the props like the lightsaber and R2-D2 and all the weapons, things like that, and then I joined George to direct alongside him on Return of the Jedi and on The Phantom Menace um, and amongst many other films and stuff. But those are the ones I think we're relevant to today. Wow, you said that so quickly, but that's a whole lot of creativity and a lot of time and a lot of life. Um, I want to jump in with a question for both of you. And maybe, Roger, you should start with this one. But how much does science fiction draw from biblical theology, whether it's the good versus evil narrative. Uh, I'd love to get your thoughts. Where did you get the, the ideas from? It, yeah, it's, it's all the same story. It's a hero with a thousand faces, as Joseph Campbell explained, and every single epic, biblical, any other religion has the same basic story. And Star Wars very carefully followed that story, George, on purpose contained all the elements that make good versus evil and uh, the light completely battle and um, defeat darkness. All of that is contained in Star Wars. So it that's the reason why it's connected to the globe like no other movie series has ever done, probably or whether will be yet. So it, it was a unique time in the world when it came out. And science fiction 
is a free playground really because we're not having to deal with enemies we all know it's a way of um, creating and imagining worlds in the future but if you look at William Gibson you look at Arthur Miller you look at all of these great science fiction writers they're actually predicting the futures <laughs> Okay, well, let's jump from there over to Linda. I know that Mitch has a question right now that he wants to ask Linda. Yeah, Linda, let me ask you, you know, Roger is mentioning the, uh, the hero with a thousand faces and some of these universal uh, aspects of storytelling that just draw in the human heart. Uh, what is it about storytelling? What is it about uh, people, how we respond so well to these sorts of things? You know, first I want to say Star Wars when I was, it's 46 years, guys, and it's multi-generation. And the themes that are in Star Wars are direct parallels right out of the Bible. But the title of Star Wars was A New Hope, all right? And it was amazing storytelling, and it was high concept. And I think about the Bible. The Bible is amazing stories. And trust me, there's some high concept stories in there also. Um, there's good versus evil. For sure, as we look at that, but I also would say there's redemption as we look at that and repairing broken relationships. And if you look at all of the stories in Hollywood and TV series and movie anymore, I could pretty much take every one of them and say there was good versus evil. Mm. How are people doing redemption? How are they doing broken relationships? So we have great writers out there today. I don't know if they are thinking that way, but I could probably take a script and go and say, you know what, let me point you back into this. And for us as believers, our new hope, well, it was Jesus. And in Star Wars, you were showing a new hope. But I think a lot of people just call it Star Wars. And to me, it was a new hope. Well, so Linda, let me uh, continue to ask you. I think that's so interesting the way you've picked up on uh, every story kind of boils down to good and evil and how a lot of that actually is biblical. And what I believe is that many aspects of storytelling relate to the human heart because God has made us to relate uh, not only to stories, but to these universal, uh, not subjective, but actually real objective truths about good and evil and a desire for redemption. Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree, Linda? What, what do you see about storytelling and about the way that God has made us? Oh, I think God has made us for exactly that. I think that all of us are searching for our purpose, okay? And that we are sitting in here trying to figure out what is our purpose? How do I live it out? And of course, you know, as it grows, think of Lou Skywalker and Roger jump in on this as he started as young, and yet he found his purpose over time. But the other thing I want to say in storytelling is here are some of the major themes that we are going to talk about that are in the Bible, but also right in there. It's love, forgiveness, hope, faith, healing, sacrifice, redemption, adversity, positivity, and trust. These come all out of the Bible. And as Roger was out there directing and building and George, every one of those themes are in Star Wars. Let's come back to that in uh, the second part of our interview today, but uh, I, because those are key things that I want to talk about. But Roger, um, if you could bring your perspective in, what's been the most spiritual, enlightening takeaway for you from all your years in filmmaking? Well, it's, it's um, the connection to the audience. That's the thing that is the most apparent with Star Wars, and it's connected globally. And... If you like, you know, Jesus told parables, they told stories, the Bible tells stories, Buddhism tells stories, Sikhism tells stories, Star Wars is part of the new storytelling arena now, whereby you've got a captured audience with a huge screen and you're telling stories. And George was able to tell a story for nine to 12 year olds, which happened to connect to adults and what's very important there is it becomes a family entertainment and that's missing in a lot of entertainment that we see especially movies that 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 you know that put is oh this one is violence this one is family this one is funny star wars embraced it all as and george i remember from 
early conversations when they were making American graffiti, they wanted to go to the cinema that weekend while they were shooting and there was nothing. He said, there's nothing for families. What this is missing. I've got to bring this back. And that was a very much on purpose when he wrote Star Wars. Um, and he created it as a science fiction story, which had never been done, facing huge opposition and persevered and mm. never gave up. And also relating to Luke, you know, Luke was just a farm boy on a planet, very ordinary, didn't know anything. He had a yearning, which is what relates to human, all of us, that there is something inside and that's trying to find your path. So you're, you're connecting to the bigger picture, which is where it relates to the Bible, to Christianity and where it relates to a young audience. And it's really given something for an audience to believe in when the world is pretty much in chaos and there isn't much for youth that Absolutely. connects. That's, that's why Star Wars has had such a huge impact. And we owe George that. that. Well, let's do this. I want to come back and talk about that bigger picture. We're going to have some quick fire questions. I'm going to ask our viewers to stay with us. We're going to be right back in a moment with, uh, with Roger and Linda. Stay with us. We're here with Roger Christian and Linda Blasey, and I want to help us, get you folks to help us make the correlation between science fiction and the Bible, some of the main themes that are there. So I'm gonna throw out a word. Uh, Linda, we're gonna let ladies go first, and Roger, I'd like you to explain where you see that concept in Star Wars. Are we okay with that? Sure. Sounds great. Uh, all right, here we go. So the first word is love. Linda. Okay, well, you know, Galatians has fruit of the Spirit, and the first fruit of the Spirit is love. And I must tell you, this is a definition. Seeking the highest good of others, love is not based on emotion or feelings. It's a decision to be committed to the well-being of others without any conditions or circumstance. That's where we have learned our love from Jesus. Okay, Roger. And it's the Jedi's, it's the Jedi's code. You know, they don't fight to go and fight, they are defense, or if something is wrong, then they will try to right it. So that was a deep love. Right on. Well, this is like a pop quiz for both of you. The next word, uh, Linda, start us off, forgiveness. Um, we're all human. And uh, on this side of earth, we're all gonna make some mistakes. And that is really our opportunity to just ask for forgiveness, build relationships. Also, it gives us a second shot, which is to show, grace to others. And that's exactly where forgiveness is both an active um, on our part and active to others. Very cool. Roger, we'd love to hear your take. Um, that's the deep heart of Star Wars, George's voice in Return of the Jedi, when he, um, Luke and Darth Vader end up fighting and battling and Luke's got him down and he's about to kill Darth Vader and he puts a lightsaber down and they look in each other's eyes, and there is only compassion and forgiveness. That is George's words at the heart of Star Wars. And uh, I remember that's a very powerful moment. Um, Linda, the word for you now is hope. You know, for hope, we <clears throat> not only have hope because of the resurrection, but we also have hope because we know we're never walking alone. And that is really what I think all of us as believers know is that our hope is grounded in Jesus and that he is there in front of us and behind us. Hmm. Roger, talk to us about hope. Yeah, it's a new hope. I mean, that's what it was called. And, and it's, you know, you can relate it right back to George Lucas, who was hoping to get his film made to give to people against all odds against everything was against him nobody wanted to do the movie i was the same trying to make things that there was no way to do it with no budget i hoped i could pull it off <laughs> that's at the heart of star wars really um for everybody on the planet you hope and believe that's cool so hope was even in the creation of the movie that's awesome uh what about this word uh faith linda tell us about faith for a believer, faith is believing in what we don't see. And it has a direct relation right in there on Star Wars that Roger will pick up. But that's our faith. Um, you have faith when you don't see it. 
I don't think you have to have a lot of faith when in fact it's there. So we absolutely have that from the Bible and we know that we can trust it. Okay, Roger, we got to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, it's very true. This is from the beginnings of the origins of man. There was always faith. It's like you're walking in the wilderness. You hope you're going to find a fire. Um, faith is that the element of Star Wars, um, that they could achieve what they could do to make the planet that they are on better, to the world better. And that relies on faith, and we all do. Faith is at the heart of everything, and you have to believe, and you have to rely on your instinct that that faith is the right way to go. Whatever people around you tell you, there's a lot of negatives come at you. You have to have faith. Hmm. You know, the next word is healing, and I'm kind of intrigued with this one. I'd love to hear your spin on healing from the Christian perspective uh, Linda, but also Roger, as you think about the healing of relationships, you can give that some thought, but I, I want you to start with us, Linda, please. Healing is relationships. Uh, we live in a world right now where there are broken relationships, and it's our opportunity to really model that behavior of healing. And healing is beginning to spend time with each other. I often say to people, seek to be, seek to understand, not to be understood. Healing is starting that process. It is ex extending an olive branch farther because you want to be part of that. So to me, we have healing and we need healing in today's world right now. And I would encourage everyone, reach a little bit further and seek to understand. Roger. Yeah, very well put. It's um, healing is is yeah, it's healing of the heart, healing of the mind, healing of the spirit, healing of all of those things. That's right at the heart of Star Wars, um, and at the you know that the, it's again going back to that same point. The biggest point there is the healing of the two sides of dark and light, where they come together and they're healed in. A new hope in in sorry in return of the jedi right. when they come to that moment that's the healing that's what the world needs okay that's great now so i got a word for you you're both sounding like preachers right now so that, that's, that's pretty encouraging you can take over for me and mitch yeah mitch so i got another word for you and uh i i applaud both of you for thinking this quick uh redemption linda talk to us about redemption what is it all about when I think of redemption is that you have come through some sort of story arc and you're able to then see the redemption and see the other side, okay? And yet also redemption for me, and certainly out of Christ, was seeing these values in people that others don't see. So I see the redeeming parts of people, as we're not judging, but I also see that someone may have done something and they've gotten on their knees. I couldn't agree more. You know, the best way to fight a battle is with scripture. And uh, that is our lightsaber and pray. But also for me, redemption comes across where someone has been redeemed through whatever circumstance. Roger, we're going to let you come back on that one. Yes. I mean, redemption is, is it's redemption. It's re kind of it's it's part of forgiving it's part of the learning process to redeem uh, values and star wars when you come to the end of the whole saga that's where it comes to fruition whereby everything that has gone on in there there is redemption at the heart of it hmm. wow okay you know what we've gone over time but we're still going to keep going because this <laughs> is good I want you both. You need to, a series. <laughs> yeah, I, I want you to weigh in on one last word, and it's a. I'm not even going to explain it. It's positivity. Uh, where does that whole notion uh, find root from your framework, Linda, and then from yours, Roger? Okay. Well, here at Pure Flix, we say we're light in the darkness. All right, and so I'm going to take positivity as the light, and the light is that. You know, we can get to know Jesus and we can then experience him. And then we can, in fact, have this positive nature with us, which is the light. Oh, wow. Roger, you get the final word. Well, 
the, the, the yin and the yang, all right, our brains, human brains, live on dark and light. There is two sides going on all the time. The temptations of darkness are always there. And there is the bright, the light. That's the lightsaber. And that's where you, it's a daily practice, which is what I guess the Bible taught and Jesus taught. It's a daily practice to look to the light and to redeem yourself. Because the darkness, if you look around, even now, just talking now, internet and TikTok and all these things, I would say 70% of it is dark, it's negative. People ear that way for some reason. So you have to go to the light and that's inner work. That's what's is taught us in religion and that's what's taught us in Star Wars. Keep focus on the light. Right on. Well, Roger Christian and Linda Blazy, just want to say thanks so much and I appreciate the work both you do. It's been fun talking. And you both thought on your feet. I'm impressed. So Very uh, impressed. <laughs> thank you, folks, for coming on. <laughs> and everybody at home, stay with us. Me and Mike are going to talk about uh, some of the things that have just been shared. Stay with us. We'll see you. Well, we just come out of our interviews with Roger Christian and Linda Blazy and Linda's work with Pure Flix, Roger's uh, work with Star Wars. And that was so funny that Pure Flix clicked. Yeah, we're still laughing about <laughs> we're that. We're still laughing. <laughs> Mike, from the interviews, what is your big takeaway? Well, I just appreciated that both people were willing to share from their heart. Mm. And it's interesting to see the overlapping of themes. Um, as Linda shared from the position of someone who's a strong believer in Jesus and I think Roger was sharing from someone who would say he's a spiritual person. Right. And we see some of the themes. Right. At the end of the day, we have to come back to the fact, what do we think of Jesus? Absolutely. And it's, it's easy to get caught up, you know, in, in Star Wars and watching the Jedis fight it out. And what I was thinking... It kind of exposes something in us, isn't it? This... Yeah, it exposes, a, I would say, a desire for more, a desire for something uh, beyond, really, just the material. And I think what's neat, Mike, is that we can look at uh, the fight with Luke and Darth Vader and how Darth Vader's character, spoiler alert, uh, Darth Vader <laughs> ends up kind of turning good at the end. And as much as I say, well, how good is that for Darth Vader? I know that was good in my own life because of Jesus and the way that I lived a certain way at one point. But then I say, you know what? Now that I've met Jesus, I want to live a certain way. And so we can have that redemptive story for real in our lives. Well, over this week, Mitch, as you know, I'm teaching on the whole subject of envy. And one of the things about science fiction is that we can get lost in that world, Absolutely. right? But I think also in life, we can get lost ourselves in saying, oh, I look at you say, I wish I had that very cool cotton shirt. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I know it's brand new, but it looks good, Mitch. <laughs> Thank you. And did you iron it as well? I did iron it. You That's did right. iron it. So I'm kind of envious of that because if I look like that, then, you know, whatever. We, we can have a bit of fun with that, but envy really is subtle. Right. And I want to take people right now for the last few minutes to Psalm 73, where we're teaching from. And so if you have a Bible, I want to invite you to go to Psalm 73. And we start it with verse 1. The guy's name is Asaph. And Asaph was a worship leader uh, in the Old Testament. He influenced so many people. Actually, he wrote 12 of the Psalms. But he goes through a difficult time. And in verse 2 of uh, Psalm 73 that he writes, he said, I almost stumbled. Means he basically had a faith fallout. He was wondering if God was there, if God really cared for him because he said, here I am following after you with all of my heart and buddy down the street who doesn't give a rip about you, God, they seem to prosper and everything is going well. We're going to get to that part uh, in another day or two, but for right now, I want to pick up what Asaph was talking about. He describes the people down the street. He said, I was envious of the arrogant. I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Listen to that. They don't even have problems when they die. Their bodies are fat and sleek, kind of like they can eat cheeseburgers and, and deep fried Oreo bars, and it never is going to hit them. They're never going to have high cholesterol. And he said, they're not in trouble as others are. They're not stricken like the rest of mankind. Asaph is really bummed out. But here's what we have to think about today. He said, as for me, my feet had almost slipped. And I want you to think about the slippery ground that you might be on. And the slippery ground is when we begin to envy what other people have. And we want it and it shapes us. And even if we can't get it, it distorts our vision of life and leaves us very unhappy and dissatisfied with life. 
And the slippery ground will take us. I remember when I was about seven years of age, we were visiting a camp and my dad was driving the car and it had been heavy rain. And as we were driving in the camp road, it was a narrow road and there was probably about a hundred feet down into the water, a cliff off to the side. And when you know it, the road washed out and our car started to slide off the road. But what happened is that as it was sliding, there was a tree stump and the tree stump caught the axle of the car and we got out of it very gingerly and the car was rocking like that. Ever since that time, I've had a great appreciation for where God places tree stumps to catch us. And what was it that almost caused this guy Asaph to slip and to fall? Thankfully, God put a tree stump there to catch him. And we're going to see what that was in another day or two. But he said, I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. The pressures of life was getting to him. He was saying, life isn't giving me a fair shake. And the more he sought to serve God, it seemed that the harder things became. Can you identify with that? Possibly you can today. And he said, those who seem to have no place for God, they prosper. Asaph needed answers. And I'm grateful for his transparency, his honesty. He's as real as they come. And now he's saying, God, I'm about to walk out on you. I'm about to give up on you. And that's why we need to pause and think about the destructive power of envy. Here he was envious of other people because he didn't have what they had. He was going through what appeared to be a very difficult time. And he said, God, you know what? I'm going to bail on you. I'm going to give up on you. Maybe you find yourself in that place today. Maybe you're not even identifying the destructive power of envy in your life. We're going to see its subtle ways tomorrow as we come back in the teaching. But for today, I want to invite you to turn your eyes to get your focus back on the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to know that more than the force is with us. We need to know that the very presence of the living God is in our heart that he is the one that can transform us to keep us. And regardless of what you're going through, he wants you to know that you can trust in him. And I want to invite you today to surrender your life to him, to invite him to be your Lord, to be your leader, and to be your savior. Thanks for watching The Perspective. I hope to see you again tomorrow. At the beginning of the program today, I shared with you the verse for the day, John chapter 14, verse 27, where Jesus talks about entering into his peace. Do you have peace with God today? Are you right with him? He extends the invitation to come into his family. He said, you just need to confess your sin and call on me to be your savior, and I will always answer that prayer. Would you pray with me that simple prayer to start your life and your journey with God today? You could pray something like this, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to be my savior. Will you forgive me of my sins? I'm placing my trust in you. I want to walk with you. Receive me for Christ's sake. Amen. And if you've prayed that prayer, please write to me, prayer at the perspective.tv. Let me know the decision that you've made. I would love to send you some information to help you start growing in your Christian faith. Thanks for watching.